The last section of this chapter had to do with the kinds of information that managers need in order to make decisions. This section has to do with how we can tell whether managers are making good decisions. In order to do that, we need to think a little bit about control and evaluation. Control has to do with our understanding of the things over which a manager has jurisdiction because we know it's wrong to evaluate people on things over which they have no control. And then evaluation has to do with the extent that the manager uses the things that they can control in the firm's best interest. In order to do this, we need to think of our firm as a set of what are called responsibility centers. That is, organizational units where we can understand what the manager can control. So in each organizational unit, the manager is accountable for specific things. There are four basic types of responsibility centers. Revenue centers, cost centers, profit centers, and investment centers. A revenue center is one in which the manager's primary responsibility is to generate revenues, but the manager does not have significant responsibility for costs. Best example of a revenue center would be the sales department, where the manager's primary job is generating sales revenue. Does the sales department have costs? Of course it does. It has, uses electricity and it has depreciation on the office equipment and there may be some salaries, but that's not the manager's primary function. When we evaluate a revenue center, we're going to look at the manager's control over revenues, not costs. By contrast, a cost center has a manager whose primary job is to generate costs, not revenues. For example, the production department in a manufacturing firm is a cost center. The manager generates costs for materials and for labor and for overhead, but has no responsibility for selling the products that are made. Because of that, we would evaluate this manager based on his or her control of costs. Now, profit center is a little more complicated. In a profit center, the manager has significant influence over both revenues and costs. Now, supposing that I'm the manager of a Starbucks. Corporate headquarters actually owns the Starbucks, but I'm responsible for running it. That means my job is both to generate revenues by providing good quality products and good service to my customers and to use costs wisely. That is, hire people, pay people, make sure that I have the right number of people working, make sure I turn off the lights before I go home. Because of that, the manager of a profit center is going to be evaluated on both revenues and costs. Finally, some organizational units may be investment centers. In that case, the manager has control 
not just over revenues and costs, but also over the firm's investment in that unit's long-term assets like buildings, machinery, computers, driveways, etc. In that case, you have to evaluate the manager not only over revenues and costs, but also over efficient use of the firm's assets. So now, for example, we talked in the last section about Carmen's cookies. If Carmen wanted to evaluate the baking department, how is she going to think of it? The baking department is probably a cost center because it generates costs for depreciation on the baking equipment, for materials to make cookies, for salaries for the bakers, but it's got nothing to do with selling the cookies. The sales department is probably going to be evaluated as a revenue center. They don't bake the cookies, but they are responsible for selling the cookies. Now, what about a storefront shop? That has responsibility over both the revenues and the costs. Because of that, it's probably going to be treated as a profit center. Finally, the entire firm is responsible not just for revenues and costs, but also for using the firm's long-term assets wisely. Because of that, it would be treated as an investment center. Now remember, this is not a gap issue. There are no accounting police that are going to come and arrest you if you evaluate a department in your organization incorrectly. The penalty, however, for making a poor choice of how to evaluate managers of your departments is they may not work as hard as you want them to or as hard as they could if you were evaluating them on things over which they actually had control. The last thing that I want to discuss with you in this section is my own rules for cost accounting. These are not GAP either. They're things that I have found are sort of true over the years. Number one, all costs have to go somewhere. From a financial accounting point of view, this means that all costs that we incur either have to end up on the income statement so that we can take revenues minus costs and determine profit, or they have to be capitalized on the balance sheet. From a managerial point of view, all costs still have to go somewhere. So for example, if we make several products, we have to decide how much cost is assigned to each product. If we run several departments, we need to decide how much cost is assigned to each department. These are very tricky issues, and it turns out that if we don't understand where costs belong, we may misunderstand how our firm is operating, and we're going to talk significantly about this issue in the chapters to come. Rule number two is you can't control costs that you can't see. A big part of cost accounting is making costs visible so that we can see whether we need to do something about them. I have a nephew who sometimes runs out of money before the next paycheck. Now, I asked him, what do you spend your money on? He says, I don't know. 
if he kept a list of everything that he spent money on, then he'd know the answer to that question. The next rule is costs advise us, but they don't rule us. In other words, we can determine how much something costs, but that's not going to tell us what to do. We still maintain our independent managerial judgment. The next rule is decisions are only as good as the information and the skill used to make them. That is, even if you're really smart, you can't make a good decision using bad information. And even if your information's really good, you can't make a good decision if you don't have the skill. Finally, we are what we are rewarded to be. In other words, if you are managing people, you always need to consider human nature and whatever it is that you reward is what you're going to get. So make sure that it's what you wanted. Again, there are no accounting police who will come and get you and arrest you for breaking these rules. The point of these rules is if you don't think about them when you make decisions, you may not make the best decisions.